the format of being robot. Okay, fine, this'll be the final time I'd mention the small crumbs in the Bacon series. I just received an email with a YouTube link. One is May 13, 2006, which, if you remember two years ago, the infamous March 30, 2006 incident happened before. This video was supposed to be about events that happened in separate years. However, the timeline I've set seemed almost like a strung out and structured timeline. I checked the first video. It started with the normal episode of Have You Seen This Snail? But when the song Dairy Come Home started playing, that's when things took an unexpected turn. Literally on the 58 mark, it cuts to SpongeBob's body looking like it's torn in half, with the window replaced with help. And then, I seen it, and my skin turned cold. There, laying on the floor was a dead body of a kid, with what looked like a bullet wound on the head. Oh dear god. I paused the video and ran to the bathroom to vomit and scream out what the hell over and over again. I shakingly went back to the laptop and continued the video. On the 1-8 time frame, there was a message that said, Don't even think about it Tommy. Tommy? Could this be the linchpin on the investigation? Could Tommy be the kid that went missing back in 2005? Even if that's the case, who took the footage and edited it? I kept on watching, my body shuddering and cold from the reaction. SpongeBob's sad frame was set there before something unexpected happened. The frame from July 25, 2005 was shown. The one hovering up above was shown overlapping the other SpongeBob. At 1.22, the jump scare happened, like the jump scare from Filth. The frame jumps to an edited version with two black and white pictures of the kid and then the same dismembered head with a loud high-pitched scream. Good grief. At the exact moment of 1.29, that's when the real fear happened. On the billboard was the phrase, it was worth it. I looked at the newspaper my friend gave me and looked up the father. It turns out, the father's last message before being on death row was, it was worth it. This was it. This is insane. It turns out Aaron Pickett could potentially kill his family. I was gobsmacked. I looked over next closely. There was a smiling face. A man. It's making more and more sense. The frame stopped as the events of July 25, 2005 played, the exact same thing before. But when SpongeBob was laying on the ground, it cut to a black and white picture of a blender with the name, Kate Wilson. These names. These names, they sound familiar, but why? As it continued, during the scene with SpongeBob on the TVs, it cuts to a green snapshot of a lost kid. That's when it hit. Kate Wilson was the kid of Aaron Pickett, that's the kid that was killed. A loud buzzing noise was heard as the corpse's face showed up again, making me scream in genuine fear. Another name was shown, right Tommy. When I googled the name, my jaw dropped. The kid Tommy, was the sister of Kate Wilson. Tommy went missing back in 2005, but why was he found? As the buzzing continued, the screen showed a red picture, that's Aaron Pickett. Holy shit, that's the same guy that potentially murdered his wife and kid. The buzzing slowed down drastically as it cuts back to the original episode. As a final jump scare, when it shows Gary over by the newspapers, it shows a bloodied SpongeBob and then the kid's face once more. Something about this video, something about it seems like it's connecting the dots from the July 25, 2005 saga. The new pictures, the jump scare, the body, and even the new faces and names. I took the video, downloaded it, and then used a USB drive and sent the mail to my buddy to see if he can update the supposed manhunt with the new evidence. The process is taking quite a bit but I'm hoping this page on the July 25, 2005 saga is finally over and done with.